Hey guys, what is up? It is Jimmy. Today I have a new gun for you guys, and this is the LEGO Winchester 1866. So, a lever action rifle has been requested for a super long time, and I just really hadn't had the guts to try it out until now. And it has actually turned out extremely nice. I am super happy with the way this thing has worked out. So, let's just start going over with the stock. As you can see, I've finally been able to do the uh, little cat. <laughs> Finally been able to do the uh, wood furniture in light gray uh, thing that I've been promised or promising to do uh, <laughs> ever since I started doing wood furniture guns. So uh, the stock is in uh, light gray. As you can see, it has a few different shades of uh, light gray. It is a older one and then a newer one. So it kind of also gives the wood grain feature, I guess you could say. Uh, but it does look really nice. It does have a lot of slopes on the back here to make the kind of... Uh, place where your shoulder is supposed to go and uh, for me I'm not a really big fan of this because it just restricts the way you can hold the gun on your shoulder I did want to use uh, a bunch of uh, cheese soaps on top of here but I didn't actually have enough to do it I barely have enough just to put on the grip which is pretty comfortable sadly the whole thing is extremely unstable as you can see right here it breaks apart super easy that is just a failure on my part because I could have used a bigger piece that goes to here and then it would have been a lot more stable getting a bit of a um, longer connection. But uh, it does have the color difference uh, stripe right there, which is actually very stable. It's the part that I expected would break, but it doesn't. So the bottom of the grip doesn't really have any slopes whatsoever. I didn't really have enough slopes to do uh, any of this uh, in uh, inverted slopes, which is what I initially wanted to do. But it does have a pretty nice curve going one stud all the way down to uh, an alternating one two just to give the kind of uh, slack curve, I guess you could say. Here's the lever, which does of course work. It does push back the hammer with the bolt right there. This was extremely difficult to figure out. I went through so many designs to actually get something that worked and that I was happy with. Uh, and using this kind of technique, uh, rod was the best way to get it done. Uh, also restricting the friction that ended up being here if I had it brick built. And it does push back the hammer so that the trigger can be pulled. So when I push back the lever, we can pull the trigger and the hammer does go up. Uh, of course, this isn't really how it works. It's kind of supposed to be opposite, uh, that when the hammer isn't primed, the trigger is supposed to be forwards. But here it is a bit different just so we could get that play feature of using the lever and then pulling the trigger. So the trigger is just made with a, uh, I guess you could say, Technic clip piece type thing. Uh, so it does just click so I can put it into whatever trigger position I want it to be. Uh, but it is a bit nicer than the other Technic piece because this doesn't really have a hole in it and it is a bit skinnier, so. Here you can see the place where the lever is connected. This was also a pain, so the whole uh, thing has a Technic rod going all the way up. And then it is connected to this rod and essentially the uh, Technic beam that goes up to this rod just pushes it back and then this is the furthest it goes back. Everything just locks at this point. So it does only go back uh, like four studs on top but it does have the full lever movement so I am pretty happy about that. On the top we have a whole bunch of um, bow slopes which I bought and I haven't really used that much so this was a really nice way to finish off the top and get it kind of studless. As you can see, I've tried to do it on the whole top of the model. No studs on the barrel, no studs on top here, and on top of the stock. Sadly, the sides of the barrel do have studs, but that is okay, I think. <laughs> so, we'll just flip it over right here. Try not to destroy everything, since it breaks really easily. Here we have the loading door, which does actually work the way the Winchester loading door does work. As you can see, it is in extremely simple in design. It just has a 1x2 plate with a kind of... Uh, hook piece, I guess you could say. <clears throat> so it just has a tiny rod that goes up there. And then I just put a uh, Technic beam on top of there. And then I just put a few plates on it to make some width. And then we have a rubber band going from kind of in between or in the middle of the beam and then goes all the way to the back so that it kind of pulls the door out. We have this piece that is removable, which is how you remove the bullets once they've been loaded into the thing. So, uh, I'll just show you the loading of the bullets here. So 
So that is all the bullets loaded up. You can kind of hear them rattling around inside the loading tube. I did want to get a spring uh, loaded uh, loading tube as I have done with my shotguns in the past, but I wasn't really able to get that done because of the restricted space in here. So it does actually hold seven bullets, uh, which is what the real one holds, but I only have five yellow uh, one by five Technic beams. So those will be used <laughs> as bullets. Here we have the handguard, which is nothing too special. It is just a light gray um, kind of rectangle, rectangle, I guess you could say. Uh, the bullets go through in here and it is empty pretty much the whole way. So the barrel just sits kind of inside of it. And as I said, the barrel does have a bunch of suds on the sides. That is because I don't have too many two by four and uh, two by two um, tiles. So sadly I wasn't able to tile this out, uh, but I do still think it looks pretty nice. We have the, uh, I don't know if it's the gas tube or if it's the loading tube or something, but it is on the bottom here. Uh, I didn't really um, do any research on that, so that's my bad. Uh, but it is down here, it is just connected with a little plate in the front there, so it is kind of loose as you can see. Here we have the rear sight, which is kind of the same thing as the AK, that you can pull on the uh, little knobs here, click those in, and then you can push it forwards to elevate the sight. This one does elevate, but it is also very fragile, so I'll try to see if I can give you a look down the sights. There you go, pretty standard sights. Um, let me just put this back together real quick. As I said, not the most stable, but I could easily fix that. <laughs> Here we have the end of the barrel, nothing special, no real muzzle whatsoever, we just have the front sight on top. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I did actually want to make a tutorial for this, but I didn't end up making it in LDD. But it is pretty simple to just make this up, uh, at least I think so. Uh, the internal mechanism for the lever and bolt, just like the Martini Henry, I used the uh, real life mechanism as a sketch to kind of make it. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully it won't be so long until next time I upload, but, um, yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys. Goodbye.